Howdy y'all, this is History by Phillips, I'm Mr. Phillips, and welcome back. Hopefully everybody had a great fall break. Uh, last time we talked about the American Revolutionary, uh, the American Revolutionary War. Uh, we looked at pretty much, uh, Britain had the strongest, toughest military in the world, uh, but some disadvantages is they had to go across an ocean to fight this war. Uh, they made a lot of enemies in Europe. Uh, the Americans would rely heavily on their allies because remember, this is a brand new country. Uh, they're having to start everything from scratch, uh, get uniforms, food, ammo, stuff like that, even establish their own government. Uh, but the war wages on at the very beginning, pretty much. Britain is molly whopping the, uh, the Patriots. They're beating them left and right. There are some exceptions. Uh, talked about some battles, Lexington and Concord, uh, the first shot heard around the world, uh, romanticized by Emerson. Uh, he, what he meant by that is how dare these people take on the British Empire. Well, at least that's what I think. Anyway, uh, toward the end of the war, uh, it's a war of attrition. Pretty much if the colonists can survive, Britain will have no choice but to give up. Uh, you see this strategy done in Vietnam and Afghanistan as well. Uh, just wear them out. Just wait till they wait till they give up. Uh, but toward the tail end of the war, uh, there's some significant battles, cow pens and all that down in the south, uh, around the South Carolina area, around this region. But remember, pretty much track Cornwallis here in Yorktown. Uh, Washington came from the north. The French came from the ocean and. Uh, Lafayette, uh, pretty much Washington's right-hand man, uh, bring up the Continental Army from the south. Uh, the Americans would win. Yay, goodbye, King George. Hello, America. Uh, well, that brings us into today and this week's series. This week's series will be a more perfect union. Uh, the United States have won the war. They are underway of building this new nation, building a government. Uh, that's the, what we're going to focus on today. We're going to talk about uh, how they go about trying to establish this government and uh, the U.S. Constitution. We're about a month behind. We should, we should have done the Constitution mid-September, but we'll be getting to it this week. Uh, but first, before we get into the Constitution, we need to discuss the Articles of Confederation. I uh, just now noticed my Pardon my chicken scratch up here. Uh, Articles of Confederation. Uh, basically, the Articles of Confederation is the first constitution of the United States. That's a good way to think about it. Uh, it was terrible. Uh, to me, rules, uh, I don't know. This was kind of like a prototype constitution. They used it, figured out the kinks, what's wrong with it, uh, and they would revise it in in the form of the U.S. Constitution, what we know today. Uh, big thing is, is a weak central government. Uh, that might be a new term for some of you eighth graders. Uh, get used to it. You'll have it for the rest of your life. When we say central government, we usually refer to the big government. Uh, think of Washington, D.C., President Trump, Congress. It's pretty, some, the central, pretty much controls the nation. Uh, there's a big uh, big debate back then about how much power should the national government have. Still kind of is today. This uh, this would also go toward, this will fuel some of the Civil War as well. I'm sure you guys heard Civil War is about states' rights. Uh, some of it stems from this. Uh, depends on who should have more power, the state or the national government. Uh, long story short, national government does, uh, but we'll get into that. But today, uh, so let's get started. So the Americans win, Patriots win. Woo! These thirteen colonies, these states, I'm start calling them states now. They're officially states. These states, they need a new government. Uh, what they do know is they do not want a monarchy. Uh, if you recall, a monarchy is simply a government with like a king or queen. Uh, typically, uh, the king or queen would have most of the authority, most of the power, uh, pretty much what's going, like what laws are made, uh, how to enforce them, stuff like that. England's a little different. I mean, they have a parliament that kind of keeps the king in check, but that took centuries for them to develop that. Uh, we piggyback off them. Uh, they'd go one direction, we'd go another. But basically, we know the, the Americans just don't want a monarchy. They don't want some tyrant in control. Because remember, they was housing troops, uh, no taxation without representation. Or out to a speedy and fair trial, uh, trial by jury, uh, 
has a church, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, press, assembly, things of that. They don't want somebody like that again taking their rights, their natural rights away. Uh, so they decided to come up with a new kind of government, which is a republic. A republic. A republic. Uh, a lot of folks get, uh, this is a big misconception, a lot of folks think the United States is a democracy. Uh, that is... False. If you want to be technical about it, it is a democratic republic. The United States is a republic. All a republic means is that you vote for somebody to represent you. Case in point, think of the Tennessee governor. Uh, we all elect the governor. The governor represents Tennessee on the national level. Uh, obviously, it would be crazy, uh, senile to have every citizen of the state of Tennessee go to Nashville and Washington, D.C. and address their concerns. It's more streamlined if you have one person representing that for you. That's why we have elections today. That's why we vote uh, for the mayor. Uh, you got your sheriff, you got uh, your state representative, uh, governor, all, all sorts, all these people. They are elected to represent you. Uh, ideally, they try to represent close to like 60, 100,000 people. In this case, we'll be talking about 60,000 people. But the idea is you vote for somebody and they represent you. Uh, uh, so all these colonies, all these states, they'll start electing their own leaders within their own borders. So Pennsylvania, they'll elect their own. Uh, North Carolina, Georgia, New York, all these. They'll start electing their own governors, their own legislature, stuff like that. Uh, Another thing to keep in mind is that they wanted a bicameral government. Uh, today we have a three, our government has three parts. Back then they wanted a bicameral. Supreme Court didn't exist then. Uh, let's break that word down. Bicameral. What, I mean, if you don't know it, bi means two. So we have two houses. Uh, think best way to think of this is you got the president and you have Congress. You have two separate entities. The uh, reason for that is so in case this entity, so let's say the president gets too, I don't know, drunk with powers or something like that, uh, ideally the legislature, the Congress, can stop them and vice versa. If Congress gets too out of control, the president should be able to stop it. It limits the power, make sure nobody gets too greedy, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, this would all stem from King George, because King George didn't really have anybody just put him in his place to stop him from violating these natural rights that John Locke would uh, talk about. Uh, but yes, uh, the reason why they set up two, two houses because you don't put, you pretty much don't want all your eggs in one basket. Uh, so you got the president on one side and you got Congress on the other. Uh, it just keeps, make sure nobody has too much power. Makes too many mistakes. Uh, next thing is, is the state and national government. So each state has its own constitution, has its own way of electing its leaders, its governors, representatives, so on and so forth. Uh, all these stuff, they're very similar. Uh, there's some exceptions like Pennsylvania, instead of having a governor at the time, they had a 12 person council. Uh, they did away with that by, then, uh, by, by now. Uh, but essentially, they'd all set up their own constitution. They're all very similar. Uh, but the big thing is, is Who's going to control all these guys at the same time? This is where the national government comes in. Think of the White House, think of these people. Uh, but who should have more power, the state or the national government? A lot of folks back then wanted the state to have more uh, control because they, you know, they could control their own trade, so on and so forth. Uh, let's say if the nation wanted to raise taxes and Georgia didn't want to pay taxes, Georgia would be forced to. So that's why... Uh, many of these states, they favored the states routes because they can be more control of their own destiny. Uh, just haven't had to pay tax somewhere else, but we'll get into that. Uh, I think it was Mar not Marbury Madison. Who was it? Ogden versus Ogden. Oh, we'll get into it. But I digress. Anyway, uh, state and national government. Just keep that in mind. Know that's going to be a conflict. The state government versus national government. Uh, so the Articles of Confederation. So the Continental Congress, if you remember those guys, they got together, wrote the Declaration of Independence, yada, yada, yada. Well, they're getting back together and they're trying to come up with a new document, how to run a country, how to set up a government, this is how you do it. Well, they came up with the Articles of Confederation. 
Uh, it was a good first attempt, uh, but it was very weak. One thing, a couple things it couldn't do is you could not, not uh, negotiate with foreign foreign allies. So if you want to do business with France, uh, Spain, any other European countries, even some African countries, uh, Latin American countries, uh, there wasn't a framework, a structure in place to do that. Uh, you couldn't really officially strike a bargain, strike a deal. It was just very hard. Also, it didn't give them power to uh, run a military, uh, start up a military. Uh, just kind of left it blank. And also money. They didn't have the uh, authorization to print and issue currency, dollar bills. Now, I don't know about you, but it's kind of hard to function in a community without money. Uh, you have to rely on barter. Uh, a lot of folks did barter back then, but it's a lot easier to trade coins and paper dollar bills and have to carry around deer skins and food and all that. It's just easier to carry around money. So they had issues with that. Uh, so they'll end up reworking it. We'll talk about it more tomorrow. But the big thing we'll talk about is the new land that we got. So we remember the American Revolution, uh, the French and Indian War, France was here. Britain wins, kick France out. Now there's some British troops here. American Revolution happens, kick the British out. Uh, for the most part, they're gone. So we have all this new land. Uh, we got to figure out how to settle it. Uh, something will come up called the Northwest Ordinance. Uh, basically, what the Northwest Ordinance is, is starts it organizes how these areas should be uh, structured. So basically, you start seeing them get up in like six by six square mile townships, is what they call it. Think of it like a six by six mile town. Uh, all through here, that's how they organize it. And once these areas had sixty thousand residents, they could apply to be a state. Uh, I take. It won't take too long of me. These folks uh, got paid with land from the American Revolutionary War, uh, so I'll be a lot of those folks. Uh, in the United States are wanting people to go out here and settle this. They want to populate this, so they're encouraging it. Uh, they're selling this land off pretty cheap. I think it was like 320 acres for, I want to say close to 100 bucks or something. If you don't know, that's pretty damn good. Uh, or even back then, 100 bucks back then is a lot of money, but still, that's a lot of land for that much money. Uh, so you start seeing these uh, big, the ones to keep uh, note of would be Ohio, uh, Indiana, Illinois, uh, Michigan, and Wisconsin. This would be the new states that'll get formed out of this Northwest Ordinance. Uh, trying to think, Northwest Ordinance. Oh, yeah. Dealing with Spain and Britain, the last part of this. Uh, so after the war, obviously Britain's a little butt hurt, pretty much uh, about the war. There, eh. so our relations kind of on eh, with them right now. Spain, uh, they're taking notice of the Americans. They know the war's over. But remember, Spain still has Florida and the West Coast. Well, you can't really see it. Uh, the West Coast of the United States. They're worried that all these Americans now are going to start populating through here. Uh, that's what Spain's wanting to do. So there's going to be a little conflict brewing here soon. Uh, just keep that in mind. Our relation with Britain's eh right now. We're going to have another war with them, the War of 1812. Uh, Spain, we kind of have a war. Not really, we kind of just bully them. But right now our relationship with these, our ally, or these European powers are on, is on shaking ground. Uh, but to recap today's lesson, uh, today was about the Articles of Federation, it was pretty much the first Constitution of the United States, and it was terrible. Uh, several reasons why it's terrible. Uh, one is you needed all 13 states to approve something. And I don't know if about you, but anytime you get together with your friends and vote on something, say you want to go somewhere to eat, uh, if one person said no, you couldn't go. That's how it worked back then. Uh, it's not like that today. If one state says no, just to be a stick in the mud, don't matter. It's just majority now. Uh, used to it had to be all 13 states. They dropped it down to nine of the 13. But we'll talk about that with the Constitution. Uh, pretty much three fourths. Uh, yeah.
Uh, the Articles of Federation is a very weak document. It didn't, it didn't allow the Americans to conduct foreign affairs, uh, effectively run a military, issue and print money. They're also dealing with deflation. If you know what deflation is, pretty much money loses its value and everybody gets poor. Uh, but this government that they're setting up, they don't want a monarchy. They want a republic. That's the big one from today. A republic. Just know what a republic is. And with that republic, they would set up a bicameral uh, legislature or a bicameral government, meaning they have pretty much a president and they have a congress. Uh, then we have all this new land that we're trying to settle, uh, the Northwest Territory, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Uh, but that's it for today. Uh, be getting on Edmentum. I got the summits up last night. Uh, Come to study block 130. Hopefully everybody back and ready to go at it. Uh, remember, school's all week this week. No more Fridays off. Uh, dude, I'm trying to think of anything else. But until then, it was good to uh, see everybody or talk to y'all. Until next time, this has been History Buff Phillips. I'm Mr. Phillips, and we'll see y'all tomorrow.